has made. As people of God, we rejoice in and we are glad in this day. You asked that question, how do we rejoice in the midst of uh, this moment, in the midst of a memorial? We rejoice because we know that God is with us in every facet of our lives. In good times, God is there. When things are going well, God is there. When things are going great, God is there. But God is there also when things are not as happy as we would like for them to be. God is our ever-present help in a time of struggle. Amen? Amen. We will be now begin our memorial service for Mr. Audrey Acre. Uh, we will start with a musical prelude uh, by our Jarvis University uh, with band director giving us leadership to Amazing Grace. Amen. Let's give God praise again for the musical selection brought to us. We will have scripture by Dr. Clarence O'Neill Preston. Uh, he's the assistant professor of religion at the Dallas uh, campus, and he's a pastor of Beth Edom Baptist Church, class of 1983. And then followed him will be Pastor Rodney Curry. Pastor of College Hill in Tyler, Texas. He's also the class of 1998. Following that, uh, we will have the musical selection by the University Choir, and I'll return after that time.
The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek your face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Psalm 24. Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father, we come this morning to first say thank you. God, how we thank you for all that you've done in our lives. As we look back over our lives, we thank you for bringing us through danger, seen and unseen. And God, you have brought us all the way, even up until this very present moment. And God, if you don't do anything else, we still have enough to say thank you. And Father, we've come this morning to celebrate the life of our dear brother, Dean Autry Acri. We thank you, God, that before you took, you first gave him to us. And so we thank you for his kindness. We thank you for his humor. We thank you for his nose. And we thank you for his yeses. We thank you, Father, for his faithfulness to this institution. And then, Father God, we thank you for the imprint uh, on our lives that he made. And Father, we pray that you would bless this family, continue to keep them in your care. We pray, Father, that you would comfort them like only you can. And then, Father, we pray that if there's any under the sound of our weak voice today that don't know you in the free pardon of their sins, God, that they would turn from their wicked ways, confess you as Lord and Savior, and, God, that their lives would forever be changed. We ask this, God, because we know that you're able. And so, Father God, we close this prayer again, and we just tell you thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for what you're doing right now, and thank you for what you're going to do. But we believe, God, that you're going to do great things. Keep us in your care and bless us now. And bless the man that will bring words of comfort on today. And then, God, continue to bless this campus and keep us in your care. We ask this in the powerful, perfect, and undefeated name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, Amen.
Amen. We will now have uh, reflections. We will have reflections first by uh, Mr. Jarvis 2324, Mr. Javier Law. And then followed by that will be from Ms. Mary Berry, my mother, uh, former director of TRIO programs here at Jarvis from 1985 to 1995. Following that, our choir will be back. And that'll be, uh, as we're doing funerals and at memorials, we have to remind uh, those who are doing remarks that this is not the time for the solo, this is not the time, but it's the time just to encourage the family. And so we will ask that you will limit your remarks to three to four minutes. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Javier Law. Um, to the president, executive cabinet, board, students, uh, the family of Mr. Autry Acri. Thank you for everything that you have instilled in me. Thank you, Mr. Acri, for everything you have done for this community and myself. The day uh, Mr. Acri passed was it wasn't a terrible day. It wasn't a horrible day, but it was a beautiful day. It was a day where many people came together to honor and celebrate him and who he was. The life that Mr. Acri lived was something special, God-given. He entered this institution in 1966 as a freshman student, graduated in 1970, bought the house on Francis Street in Hawkins, and has been there ever since because of the love that he has for this community, for this institution, and for the Jarvis family. I remember when he was my professor in history and he, he didn't sugarcoat anything. He, he gave it to all of his students straight. Talk slow, but you know, he, he got his point across. Uh, I used to go to class early talking to him and when he used to smoke them moors outside the library, I'd go talking to him then. It didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter what your background was, and it didn't matter what your circumstances were. Whether you was a man of Alpha, Phi Beta Sigma, Omega Psi Phi, Kappa Alpha Psi, or a student, a person. The first 30 seconds of your introduction with this great man was something you would never forget something I never will ever forget. To the family, you guys give me peace. The day when the police officers came over to the house, I wasn't able to breathe until I met Miss Myra, Thomas, and the rest of the family. I, I'm sorry, I can't say all your names <laughs> right now. <laughs> but that was my first breath 
since his passing. So I thank you. More than anything, I thank you for who you are, for bringing Mr. Akery back to me. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Mary Berry, and um, I worked here at Jarvis for, for many years, and uh, Mr. Aker was my supervisor. Um, I was born and raised in Meridian, Mississippi, had worked there for many years and done, you know, you kind of done all you can do, you know how that goes. And I was ready for something else. And I had list my credentials in a regional uh, database. And I was in California of all places, LA, looking around. I don't know what I was going to find in LA. But mistake recalled me when I was there. And um, I don't know how he got my number. Well, I know how he got my number. He called my home. My son here answered the phone and put Mr. Acre through changes before telling him where I was. But I'm glad that all that happened because it brought me to Jarvis. And to Jarvis was a great place to come. Mr. Acre was very supportive. He picked me up at the airport. Uh, and it all started off strange because that was the day that it had been a plane crash. Uh, this wreckage was all over the um, area. I didn't, my suitcases didn't come, my new suit that I had bought for my interview, I didn't have it. I had to do the interview, you know, with the staff for the position in the clothes that I had worn all the way there. But it all worked out because God knew that this is where I was supposed to be. And uh, Mr. Acre just made it so much easier and smoother for me. And, um, it helped not only me, but it also helped my family. Because I came that first year, my son had already enrolled in Jackson State University. So at the end of the year, he came. My daughter was in, still in nursing school, so at the end of that year, she came. And then we went back and got my family. So he was instrumental in all of us. Uh, get into a new way of life, which we, we needed and wanted. And um, I came as a director of student support services, and I'm, you're familiar with student support services and the services they offer. And um, later on, um, and we kind of grew the program a little bit, um, I got into federal uh, writing grants, and then we got funded for Upward Bound, so we were just rolling right along. And he was just, you know, he was kind of a, he was very supportive, but he didn't build and push you and all. He just kind of laid back, and when you need him, he was there for you, which is real cool with me. And uh, um, the programs, like I said, were real good. You know, they reached out into the community, they helped to bring students in and helped to keep him in and to graduate. And uh, he was instrumental in all of that. And um, um, Mr. Aker brought many things to the table. He had a winning personality. He didn't press you. He didn't ride your back. Uh, he was supportive, provided whatever assistance that, you know, that I needed. He was a good manager, he was not a micromanager, but he was a great manager. Uh, and he had a good uh, uh, rapport with the faculty and the staff and the students. 
and he uh, was always a professional. Uh, like I said, he didn't press you, but he impressed you, so you did what you needed to do. Uh, easy going, and simply put, he was a good all, good all around, a good natured person. And uh, even to this day, I'm grateful for what Ms. Sager had done for me. I had worked in higher ed before, but not at a black institution. And my days here, I stayed here, what, 10, 20 years? And um, they were good years. And I'll always remember Mr. Acri and how I got to Texas because of Mr. Acri. May God bless the family and uh, know that we are you in our prayers. Thank you. How's everybody doing this morning? Y'all can do a lot better. How y'all doing this morning? I know Mr. Eric, you one one on Saturday case. He didn't want a celebration, because if y'all knew where he was going, if y'all knew where he was right now, it would be a happy occasion right now. Amen? Some people doubt the Lord. Oh, they don't believe that my God is real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they will try. They will try to 
will tell you, my God, my Lord is dead, but I know he's real. I know, I know, I know. Hear my soul, yeah. Real, hear my soul. Said I can feel him in my bones. He is real, yeah. Oh, I know, I know. Real, hear my soul. I can feel. Can feel yeah. him moving in. Yeah. I said he's real, 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 real. Oh, some people now the Lord. They don't believe that my God is real, yeah, yeah. They will try, they will try, yeah, to tell you, my, my, my Lord is dead, but I How many of you know that God is real? Oh, about three people know that God is real. <laughs> oh, look like about 14, 15 people know that God is real. He's real. He's real. And if you don't know he's real, will you meet us after service? We can make sure that you get that introduction. So the next time that question is asked, you'll be able to answer differently. Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. We will receive now Mr. William Hampton as he brings the resolution. Resolution for Mr. Autry Aitken. 
There are some things we cannot understand while upon this earth we try, and yet we know that behind it all there must be the hand of God. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 2 tells us, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose and under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot that which is planted. Whereas our Heavenly Father arranged the tri final transition for Mr. Autry Acri, and our hearts are deeply saddened by this transition. And whereas he demonstrated a high degree of loyalty and dedication to his alma mater, Jarvis Christian University, which was evidenced through his support and advocacy as a member of the class of 1970, a devoted and dedicated employee, a life member of the JCU SCI National Alumni Association, and the Jarvis Christian University Pioneer Hall of Fame. Whereas his physical presence is indeed a great loss, vested with a mantle of humility, he will forever be remembered by the Jarvis Christian University family for his love, support, and dedication. And whereas the passing of our beloved alumnus is the will of God, and there is a human tie that has been broken, which bleeds the heart in agony and pain. We are encouraged and consoled in the words of, of Jesus who said, I will never leave thee or forsake thee. Therefore, be it resolved that while we mourn the loss of a dear friend and a fellow alumnus, we give thanks to God for sharing such a precious life with us. Be it further resolved that on this day, the members of the entire Jarvis Christian University family pause to express official condolences to his family and friends, and we bow to a greater will than our own, and the rest in the knowledge that one day we will be reunited with Mr. Acri in joy and the fullness of God's mercy. Finally, be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy permanently retained in the Jarvis Christian University archives. Humbly submitted by Dr. Glenn L. M. Lee Pruitt, President, the Jarvis Christian University family, the JCU SEI National Alumni Association, April 16, 2024, 2024, excuse me. Thank you. Receive now our president, the illustrious Dr. Pruitt, followed by the family friend, Reverend Charles Hammond. Reverend Barry, who is officiating for us, and of course to our own Reverend Dr. Dinkins and Reverend Curry and Dr. Preston and other clergy who uh, may be here, uh, to the um, faculty and staff and students who are present, to this family. Uh, I came to Jarvis in 2012. I had no idea that it was the pancake capital. And we were in a meeting and Mr. Provost, something was said that made me push my chair back from the table. And evidently someone went and told Mr. Akery what my response was to what was said. And so I'm walking down the hall and he repeats what was said and fell out laughing. And every now and then he would see me, he would repeat. I would not repeat what was said, but uh, he, would, he would repeat that. Mr. Acri worked with me in academic affairs uh, as a registrar, and, and then he was eventually our historiographer. When I heard of the death of Mr. Acri, the first thing that I said to Mr. Hampton is, we have to do something for Mr. Acri and Jarvis. We have to do something to acknowledge that he walked these grounds, that he loved this institution, and we had to do something as a part of his family. For students who are here, you did not know Mr. Acri, you missed a treat. 
For those of us who did, we were blessed that he came this way. So to this family, I say to you, thank you for sharing him with us. And I also want to say thank you for accepting our request that you come and let us honor his life here at Jarvis Christian University. I do believe that there is a great cloud of witnesses who have finished their race and who are watching to see how we run ours. And I do believe that Mr. Acri is now part of that great cloud of witnesses. To this family, I say again, God bless you and God keep you. This is my prayer for you. Morning. Morning. I'm uh, the Reverend Charles Hillman from East St. Paul Baptist Church in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm the family friend that was raised with Archery in Frederick, Oklahoma. And just want to say that I, I tell you this morning, I'm just uh, peacock proud and highly happy to be here this morning that the family allowed me to say a few words. I mean, Audrey and I, we grew up together. We were part of the Third Street Gang, we call ourselves, amen. Amen, and I can remember growing up with him, he and his family, uh, were the, one of the first uh, families on that street to have a television set. And amen, I was from a large family of 12, and his mother used to push the TV up to the window, and we'd all sit on the front porch and watch television together, amen. Amen. But you know, I'm, I'm not surprised that you're having this occasion for him because uh, you saw the finished product. We saw when God was putting everything into him. Yeah. Amen. When he was a young man, uh, we used to pull cotton. Y'all know what cotton is around here? Amen. We used to pull cotton. And, and Archie was always just a little different from the rest of us. Uh, most of the guys that uh, ran with us, you know, played football and sports, and Archie was always reading books. You know, he knew something about everything. He had this one thing that he, he liked, uh, horses. He could tell you about Triple Crown runners all the way back through the history. You know, and uh, we thought that was a little strange because the rest of it was out playing basketball and football, and this guy was talking about horse racing, amen? But, but in, his, in his academics, we could always see that he was just a little above the rest of us, amen? He was, he was a smart guy, amen? And, and uh, what you guys are seeing now, we saw back then, or we anticipated, that he was going to reach this level of achievement in academics. So, amen. He just, he just had that thing about him. Amen. He was always kind of matter-of-factly. Uh, when he said something, you believed it because of the way he said it. Amen. And, but, and I'm not going to stay too long. But, uh, uh, you know, I, and I thought about it to, today. Uh, this is a blessed day to be here. We all ought to... Give the Lord a hand clap of praise because he's good to us. Amen. Amen. And I'm reminded in Lamentations 20, uh, 3, 22 and 23, it says his compassions never end. It's only the Lord's mercy that has kept us from complete destruction. Great is his faithfulness. His love and kindness begins afresh every day. Amen. So, so we thanking him for this day. Amen. And we thanking him for the opportunity to come in and say a few words on Archer's behalf on his, for my family because we were so close. We just lived two houses down from them. But as I close just for the family, we know that Archer physically is gone. But every time you think about him, you bring him alive in your life again. And there is an old uh, Negro hymn that says, Precious memories, unseen angels, sent from somewhere to my soul, how they linger ever near me, and the sacred past unfold. Precious Father, 
loving mother, fly across the lonely years and old home scenes of my childhood in fond memories appear. As I travel on life pathways, know what not the years may hold. As I ponder, hope grows fonder. Precious memories flood my soul. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We will now receive our student choir director, Mr. Eric Linson. Following that will be the word of comfort brought to us by Dr. Cedric Dinkins. Amen. this one time. I shall wear a crown. I shall wear a
To God be the glory for the great things that God has done. Can we clap our hands one more time and give God praise today? Listen, I will not be but just a few minutes, but I want to, first of all, thank the Acre family for coming in. Thank you so much for your time. Would you please give them a hand? Likewise, we want to thank God for Dr. Pruitt, who absolutely said, let's do this on this day. And so we want to thank God for you. I want to thank God for um, these ministers who have come, Reverend Barry, uh, Dr. Preston, uh, Pastor Curry, um, who are here. But we also want to thank God for the brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated who are here um, to celebrate uh, their brother on this day. But I want to do one other thing. I want to celebrate Mr. Javier Law. Uh, for th those, amen. Clap for him. Why do I do this before I make this very brief presentation? Because people may not know this, but in the last few uh, years, even of Mr. Aker's life, Mr. Javi Law was one of the primary persons that went up there to make sure that he was okay. And we think, I think we ought to clap our hands one more time to celebrate Javi. <laughs> Somebody said he acted like an alpha man. I don't know what that means, but we, we praise God for that. So very quickly today, 2 Kings chapter 2, is Pastor Scripture that I want to lift up for just a few minutes, and I can assure you that I'm not going to be but just a few minutes because I have had about all the heat that I can stand on this day. Amen. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, uh, there's a passage of Scripture in 2 Kings chapter 2 that simply says this, uh, that while Elijah and Elisha were standing near the Jordan River, verse 7, uh, the, the 50 of the prophet's disciples uh, from the area stood at a distance. Elijah removed his cloak and rolled it up, and then he struck the water with it, and the water divided. Elijah and Elisha went across on dry ground. When they got to the other side, verse 10 says, what you have requested of me is challenging, but it will be done with you uh, when I depart. If you watch when I leave, then you, but if you don't, then you will not receive a double portion. As the two of them walked alone, a chariot came, a blazing fire, and captured Elijah and took him up to heaven. Verse uh, 13 says this, 
the cloak fell, and Elijah picked up the cloak that had dropped to the ground. He was t- when, he was, when Elijah was taken up into heaven, he went back to the Jordan River, stood, struck the water with the cloak, and said, where is the God of Elijah? The 50 prophets then said, the powerful spirit of Elijah now rests on Elijah. I want to lift up a question literally for about seven minutes, if that long. I want to lift this up. Is there life after Elijah? Is there life after Elijah? Um, If you're in my age category or older, you will remember that there was a hymn that started like this, time is filled with swift transitions. That's the only part of this I want to lift up at this time because the reality is that's what death is. It is a swift transition. What was is no more. It captures us. And even though we may anticipate that it was coming, the reality is it still catches us off guard. Is there anybody in here outside of the Acre family who has been where the Acre family is that will testify with them that life is, in fact, at the time of death, a swift transition? Why do I bring this up today, Dr. Preston? Because here is what happens in 2 Kings chapter 2. Elijah and Elisha have been traveling alone. They have gone from Gilgal to Bethel, from Bethel to Jericho, from Jericho to Jordan. And then after they have passed over the Jordan River in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, suddenly Elijah is taken away. If you read this passage in your spare time, you will discover that just like us, Elisha experiences grief. Notice what it will say when you read it. The Bible says he cried out, my father, my father, he is gripped with grief. But the question that is before us today, because I told y'all I want to get through. Here's the question before us today. The question is, what did he do next? What happened after he grieved, after his heart is broken? What happened? Does he go into his room, retreat, and does not come back out? Does he get into a corner, sit with his thumb in his mouth, and act like life doesn't exist? No, what Elisha does is what we must do. He goes on to live his life. But the question is, how did he live his life? And Dr. Sanders, I suggest to us, he sure enough lived his life. How do I know he lived his life? Because the Bible says later on that he performed more miracles in his lifetime than Elijah did in his life. And so I answer these, this question today with two little things, and then I take my seat. How does he continue when death has interrupted his life, when death has left him discombobulated? Please, if you got a Bible and you're looking at your Bible, please note that the Bible says they're walking alone. And in verse 8, the scripture says, Elijah took his cloak rolled it up, struck the water, and then they walked across on dry ground. It is at that moment that Elijah Javier is taken away. And watch what the Bible said. His cloak falls down. Tim, when his cloak falls down, Elisha picks up his cloak. Would you believe me if I told you in verse 14, he does exactly what Elijah had did. He literally takes the cloak, rolls it up, and strikes the water. It's an indication to us on how there is life after Elijah. Because you take the lessons from Elijah and apply them to your life. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a whole lot of us in here. Mr. Acre touched our lives. He he was an educator. He was a leader. He was a reader. There were things that he imparted into our lives. Do you know that what we can do now is take what he imparted into us and we can use it to live our lives? Let me say this like this, Dr. Pruitt, and then I'll move on. Somebody said to me, the safest way, way to make it across a minefield is to find the footprints of somebody who made it safely across and step where they stepped. And I need to tell somebody who may not be grieving over Mr. Acre, but you're grieving over somebody. You've lost something. You've lost somebody. And you're trying to figure out how do I keep going. They taught you a lesson. They taught you how to love. They taught you how to be patient. They taught you how to be corrected. And if we will take the lessons that they taught us, we can keep on living. That's one thing. Let me give you one more. He not only takes the cloak, he rolls it up. He strikes the water, living now the life that he's going to live with the lessons that he'd been taught. But if you were reading your Bible, watch what the Bible says. Miss Raglan, the Bible simply says this, that he now goes back across the Jordan. Back across Jordan, and there are 50 prophets from the school of the prophets that are standing there. I read it, or I summarized it. Javier, watch what it says. The God of Elijah is now with Elisha. I got to slow down through this part. The God of Elisha 
is now with Elijah. The God of Elijah is now with Elijah. Watch what happened. Elijah is gone, but his God ain't. Okay. All right. Really, really, really. The God of Elijah. Listen, Elijah's gone, but the God of Elijah ain't. So we can live our lives if we will take the God of Elijah with us everywhere we go. This is a simple message I'm through when I tell you, take God with you. Can, can I tell you that people are going to come and go? People are either going to walk out or death is going to take them out. But can I tell you who will not leave you? Can I tell you who will not forsake you? Can I tell you who will always be by your side? There is a God who is an ever-present hell. I just need somebody that's ever seen it to be true. That when I was crying, God ride my tears. When I was down, God picked me up. When I was stumbling, God steadied me. And I'm wondering, am I talking to anybody? I'm trying not to get happy. But I wonder, am I talking to anybody in here that can help the Acre family understand that this God of ours will be with you. I'm, okay, I got to quit now. He will, yeah, Dr. Richard, yeah, he will, he will, he will, he will, he will be with you at night. When you can't sleep, he'll rock you to sleep. When, when you need money, he'll provide you with your money. When you ain't got no friends, he'll be a come. I just, I just need three more witnesses. I'll make number four that will help me testify. God will be with you. Yeah, yeah. God will. God will. I got to quit. That's my seven minutes. But watch what he says. He takes God with him. So I started this sermon like this, I'll quit. Time is filled. Swift transition. Not on earth, unmoved can stand. But build your hopes on things eternal. And hold on to God's unchanging hand. That's all I came to tell you. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. No matter what, God will take care of you. Yes, he will. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Yes, sir. I want us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the life of our creature, Acre. Yes, sir. And we're so grateful. Thank you for the 46 years he invested into Jarvis. Graduated from here and then decided, I'm not leaving. And he stayed. And even after he retired, he came back, worked as a historian, and came back and worked as an adjunct. And I can vividly remember, God, every time there was a request, if he could do it, the answer was yes. So thank you for him. But now God, as his family, must go forward to live without his physical presence. May the God who is God Go with them. And may you be a very present help in the time of trouble. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we declare all is well and all will be well. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us go ahead. If you will please just join me for just a minute. It is traditional at a funeral or at a memorial that we commit the body while we do not have the remains of Mr. Acre here, we do want to do what we would normally do. So if you will allow me at this moment to perform this sacred ceremony inasmuch as it has pleased Almighty God to take from this life the soul of our dear brother. We now commit his body back to the earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. We now await that blessed day when the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and we that remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and we shall forever be with the Lord. Amen. Let me, let me say one final thing before Reverend Barry comes back. We're going to get ready to sing our alma mater in a few minutes and we put this in there because Mr. Acre loved Jarvis. And so there's not a more appropriate way, I think, than to close this service with that. But I also want to say there have been several persons who have asked me about announcements. I recognize this was not a regular chapel. Announcements are going to be sent out via email uh, right after we get through with this particular uh, memorial service today. Also, we want to remind the brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, please remain after the service has ended. 
Um, would everybody, once we conclude, please make sure we exit as quickly as possible so that they may uh, perform their Omega ceremony. At this time, Pastor Barry. Shall we stand for the alma mater? JCC, we love you. You can be number great as we are. God bless you. The end of our state, gold and blue, which we wear, you have worth, truth we share. As we prepare to receive the benediction, let me again thank the Acre family for allowing us to celebrate the life of Mr. Acre. Amen. Father, we thank you now for this time, this time of celebration, this time of reflection, this time, oh God, that has been set aside. My prayer, Lord, is that you will bless this family as we prepare to leave this place. God, they are going to go back to their individual residence. Lord, will you touch them with precious memories? Will you touch them, God, and ease, Lord, the pain and the burden of this transition? For we realize, God, that yes, life is filled with swift transitions. But God, as long as we hold on to your unchanging hand, we can make it through trials and tribulations and in times of grief and heartache. So God, we pray now that as we leave this place, that we will never leave your presence, never leave your protection, never leave your provision. To the only wise God, be glory and majesty for and ever and ever. And those who agreed said amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>